Hey guys, welcome back to Comageddon TV where all geek culture collides. I'm Shannon and today we're going to be reviewing He-Man Thundercats number one from DC Comics, so stay tuned. As I said, today we're reviewing He-Man Thundercats number one from DC Comics, written by Lloyd Goldfine and Rob David, with art by Freddie Williams II. This issue was on sale as of October 5th, 2016. The issue opens with lion -O defeating Mumra, the Ever-Living, once again, with the Evil One returning to the ancient spirits of evil, who are very upset with his defeats time and time again. They decide to transform him one final time in order to obtain a sword of great power which dwells in an alternate dimension on a planet named Eternia. A short while later, Adam wakes from his slumber to discover that once again he's late for something very, very important. King Randor was furious. The entire ceremony in which Randor would bestow upon Adam the Harness of Honor, which signifies duty and the will to defend the realm. The harness is passed down from father to son, as it was from his father to him and so on and so forth. It's at this point when a planet appears from out of nowhere. It's the Thundercats planet of Third Earth, and somehow it's crossed the dimensional barriers. The masters of the universe work swiftly to help where they can, with the panic and the planet quakes from the shift in gravity. King Randor falls as the ground crumbles around him, with Adam looking on helplessly, hanging from a ledge. Before his father can drown in the waters below, Adam drops to save him. It's here that Cringer brings Adam the power sword in order to transform. But the sorceress shows up requesting that Adam gives her the sword to keep it safe from the evil that caused the quake. Spoiler alert, guys. Uh, if you don't want to know what happens after this, go ahead and fast forward. This next part will take a couple minutes. Uh, my actual review will be at the very end of the video. So with that being said, here we go. But as Adam hands her the sword, she impales him with it through the chest and transforms into Mumrod, the ever-living. Thinking quickly, Adam grabs the sword while it's buried in his chest and calls out. Immediately, Adam transforms into He-Man and for the time being is healed of his wound. The two do battle, but Mumrod manages to escape with the power sword, but is then destroyed by Skeletor, who had been working with the ancient spirits of evil and collects the sword for himself. I really enjoyed this issue. It was a very original take on two classic franchises. The coloring could have been better, as it wasn't really quite my style. Everything seemed very muted, almost like it was done with colored pencils. The scene with the sorceress becoming Mumra was, however, incredibly expected. But I'm not sure if that's because there was so much media coverage on this series, and people revealed what happened to He-Man uh, before many of us had a chance to read it, uh, or if it was the story in general. But it did really take away a lot of the uh, suspense buildup by knowing beforehand. If you're one of those people who put spoilers in the actual title of an article just to drive views, then you are the problem with this industry. Overall, I'll give this comic an 8 out of 10. Tune in next time when I'll be reviewing He-Man Thundercats issue number 2. I'm Shannon for Comageddon TV. Take care. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you smash that subscribe button and click on the little bell to receive notifications on all our upcoming videos. Hit the like button, make sure and leave us a comment so we know how you felt about this video. And don't forget to share with your family and friends. Until next time, I'm Shannon for Comageddon, where all geek culture collides.